The first one is one of my favorite films of all time. And this movie, I liked it the first time I saw it. Then I grew to love it with each consecutive rewatch. And that's Collateral starring Tom Cruise. And one of my favorite roles he's ever been in. Why? Because he plays a villain. And Tom Cruise makes a great villain. Plus a a badass hitman, nevertheless. And Jamie Foxx in this film was great. Uh, This is directed by Michael Mann, who directed films like Heat. And this is very Michael Mann-esque, uh, and I like that. And, and the, m- one of my favorite things about this movie, and I, I love movies like this, because it all takes place at night. And movies that take place at night, I don't know why, they sort of relax me and immerse me more. And I just like watching characters in a desolated city with the, sh- the city lights, and it looks so natural. It doesn't look overproduced. It's shot sort of guerrilla style. So, Collateral has always been one of my favorite action movies that no one really talks about. Uh, but one of the coolest scenes in this film and it has, it's playing this music. Uh, I believe like a, it's a South Korean song. It's kind of like techno a little bit uh, where there's a great shootout scene that takes place in a nightclub with Tom Cruise, just kicking ass. Uh, and I actually downloaded that song and I play it on a, when I drive my car. Uh, so yeah, if you haven't seen collateral, definitely check it out. Now, I have not watched this on 4K yet, and the thing about Collateral is when it comes to uh, the technical aspects of it, some of this movie was shot on film, and I'm sure that looks fine on 4K, but some of this was shot with early digital from the early 2000s, and early digital was hit or miss, and it was very grainy and had a lot of noise in it. Uh, Not grainy, just a lot of noise. Um, So I'm curious to see how this looks on 4K with with the early digital digital. technical vibe of it but yeah i can't wait to watch this again now the next one i want to talk about is popeye (laughs) starring the late and it almost depresses me to even talk about it and remember that this happened but robin williams man uh every time i think about like what actually ended up happening i just it it my part of my childhood just dies every time anyway popeye was always a weird movie to me and i have not watched this movie in probably 15 to 20 years and it was always a weird movie it just always was to me but i am curious to go back and rewatch this with like adult eyes uh but nevertheless the prosthetics on his forearms look great he's doing a lot of forearm curls and shelly duvall was made to play the role of olive oil i mean could you pl- think of another actress who could actually look as accurate to olive oil this I always remember Popeye. The uh, show always made me want to eat spinach. And then as a kid, I ate spinach, and I was like, nah, I'll just work out one day to get strong. The next one is The Godfather, uh, and this is The Death of Michael Corleone. Uh, now, this is sort of like the re-edited uh, director's cut of the movie, which supposedly is supposed to improve the movie and fix a lot of mistakes. Now, I have not seen The Godfather 3 in a long time. A long time. And I remember the last time I watched it, I was like, this isn't that great. I mean, how do you go from Godfather 1, then you go to Godfather 2, which I think is superior, and then you go to Godfather 3, which just feels like a product of the early 90s. Now, supposedly this re-edited, tacked on with extra scenes is supposed to improve the movie. I've heard otherwise, so I'm curious to check that out. But I'll watch it on a rainy day. That's on Blu-ray. Someone said Godfather's boring. I'm not going to do it's not a movie I rewatch often, but if you love cinema, you at least have to watch the first two. I don't think the third one's probably necessary. Uh, the next one is total recall. Screw you. Now this, this is on 4k. Now I remember doing a blu-ray review of this when the blu-ray came out and that was a great transfer. And this is the film that really as a young boy opened up my eyes to Sharon stone. And those eyes will forever be open to Sharon stone. Uh, this is great, Arnie. Uh, just a great early 90s sci-fi film that's sort of a satire, but also not afraid to go for it. The special effects at the time of this movie were state-of-the-art. And you look back on it now, and it's like, ah, they don't look that great, a little bit hokey. But that's what I like about it. It's like the charm. You can see the craftsmanship and some of the, the effects and, and the, the prosthetics. And just it's still fun to look at. You know, I'd rather look at that than just cg glossy cg Uh, but yeah i am curious to see how this i can only imagine this looks great on 4k and also i think there might be something extra in here uh is there like something it feels heavier than a normal standard movie it feels like there's like a booklet or like an extra disc in here or something i don't know uh but i'll i'll savor the flavor on that and watch it 
The next one I actually ordered off Amazon for Black Friday, and this is like $12 and some change. And I mentioned this in my Black Friday uh, flick trip video. Uh, Stand By Me is one of my favorite films of all time. It's it's a great coming to age. I say coming of age. or I say coming to age. Some people correct me and say it's coming of age or vice versa. I always get it wrong. But either way, you get what I'm saying. This film has always connected to me ever since I was a kid. I always wanted friends like the friends in this movie to, to walk down the train tracks with me and go on an adventure. And just, I, I mean, if we're walking to see a dead body, so be it. I mean, I'd rather walk to the movie theater or something as a kid. That would have been fine too. Uh, but just the camaraderie between these kids, uh, you have young Corey Feldman. I always wanted a friend like Corey Feldman. I don't, is that, I know that's a weird thing, but that is so true. Uh, and I, I hope this looks great in 4k, uh, I want it on Blu-ray, but what I'm doing right now in life is essentially buying all th- there's basically 100 movies I love and I need all 100 of those movies on 4k to feel complete. Okay. The next few movies, uh, <laughs> Lord of the Rings. Now this is a pretty epic. Now they have a, like a better epic, uh, collector's edition of this that has way more stuff in it. Now, the unfortunate thing about this is it doesn't come with the special features or the bonus features. But you know what? I'm fine with that. Uh, It does have the extended versions on it, which is the only way to watch Lord of the Rings. And one day, not actually one day, when I have about three days to spare, I will go back and revisit the original trilogy, the extended editions. Once again, only way to watch it. Now, each one of these 4K movies with the extended cuts on it is two discs. And I like that. They didn't compress it. They didn't try to cram it all into one disc. They gave the films two discs to give you the best picture quality. And I'm fine by that. And there's something sort of fun and and enjoyable about if you're watching a movie at home and getting that real experience. There's something fun and ritualistic about, oh, we're, we're halfway through the movie and then disc one is over and then you pop in disc two. It's kind of fun. It's like it's like a built in intermission. For, for the movies, it's like, oh, we get to stop and go get some more popcorn and everyone gets to take a piss break. And, and then we come back and watch the movie. I, I like that. I, I've always liked when a when a long movie has two two cassette tapes like Titanic had two cassette tapes. I remember. Uh, so and each one of the uh, the normal versions is is just one disc. But there are tons of discs in here. And like I said, I need to go back and revisit these movies because it has been a while. And I knew the 4K was coming out. And I was like, I'm going to wait for the 4K to go back and rewatch the Lord of the Rings because it's been a very long time. And I've never been a diehard fan of Lord of the Rings. I like them. I respect them. Um, and I enjoy them, but they've just never been the most, they, they've just never been movies I've rewatched over and over again for whatever reason. Uh, but yeah, can't wait to check these out again. All right. Last, but certainly I would say probably least <laughs> it's the Hobbit trilogy. Also on 4k. <sighs> I don't like these movies. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you guys. I've done reviews on at least a few of these movies, I believe, if not all three. Did I do? If I didn't, I was in a a collab video with Stuckman, at least for one of these. These movies were just everything wrong with modern day cinema. Like they took a story that should have been one movie and they made like three movies out of it. Okay, fine. Cash grab. You want to do that? Fine. Um, But then not only that, it's like the CG was downgraded from the original trilogy in this trilogy. Like it doesn't look better. It just doesn't. Nothing is better about this new trilogy than it was in the previous trilogy. Nothing's better. Nothing. Not one thing improved upon. Uh, And then the the thing I most remember from a technical aspect is... uh, In in the first Hobbit flick, they wanted to introduce... uh, the the 48 frames per second uh was it 48 or is it 60 frames per second either i think it was 48 frames per second and they're like oh this is the future this is the new way of technology it's so ultra realistic and guess what happened it failed miserably right out of the gate no one liked it everyone who went to see it got motion sickness it makes the cg so much more unsettling to look at it just makes everything look that much more fake and the other thing is when you increase the frame rate, it takes away that magical glow that that cinema gives you. When I go to see a movie, I like to get immersed and just my eyeballs relax and I watch this flickering, glowing screen. And I just know I'm watching true cinema. When I watch a higher frame rate, I'm like, I'm watching someone's video camera movie. Like it just it's it, it's not appealing to me. 
so anyway, guys, uh, that's my take. Those are all the new 4K and Blu-ray movies that I have received over the last couple of weeks. Feel free to share your thoughts and uh, let me know what you guys think. But yeah, I can't wait to watch some of these. I'm like, I'm just excited. I can't wait. So let, let me know what you guys think. Yeah, uh, someone said the Hobbit looks like a PS3 cutscene. Absolutely, it really does. It really does. 